G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are continuing a series where I'm doing individual videos on 2024 draft prospects up until the draft. If you wanna see other players that I've done in this series, click in the top right corner of this video and you'll find a playlist to every player and members will have early access to these videos. So today we are doing Harvey Lankford. I've kind of done players up to this point, you know, it, from all parts of the top 30. You know, we've done Hamish Davis, we've done Ollie Hannaford lately. And today we're talking about a player that we could expect to see as early as pick four or five in this year's draft, but we'll get into the specifics on where he might go soon. If you're unaware, Harvey Langford is a 191 centimeter Vic Country inside midfielder with the capacity to play forward as well. He's genuinely dual position, which makes him have a real point of difference ahead of some other midfielders in this draft class. He's another player that's bolted over the course of this season, in particular since the championships where he was exceptionally well performed, being the joint Lark medalist with Leonardo Lombard as well. So he went from being more of a first round prospect generally to a genuine top 10 and potentially top five selection in this year's draft. His production is very consistent. In the Coates Talent League, he averaged about 26 possessions, 4.7 clearances, and more than a goal a game. So for a player that does spend a little bit of time deep in forward 50, he does still manage to win nearly five clearances a game. So when you're talking about midfielders with a point of difference for Langford, he's really tall, he's 191 centimeters, which I suppose in the modern game doesn't make him exceptionally tall, but it's still certainly on the taller end. And he's a very contest focused, impressive ball winner in that sense. But he does have the ability to float forward and clunk aerial marks with his marking prowess. His production in the Coates Talent League has been really consistent. His best performance in terms of possessions was 33. His best performance in terms of goal tally was four, and they both actually came in the same game. He's tough, he's contest focused, he wins first possession, and while he's not athletically blessed, he does work hard and he has relentless work rate to be able to rack up possessions as well. There is a bit of a question mark on leg speed, which we'll get to shortly, but it doesn't stop him getting from contest to contest and generally winning the footy. Relatively speaking, Langford would present as a fairly ready-made midfield option. It's a tough one to assess really because he is a big bodied and physically mature midfielder, although you do expect that for him to play that exact same way at AFL level, it will take some time, but he has a, had a taste of VFL as well with one game this year for Richmond where he had 12 possessions. A real point of intrigue around Langford was how he's going to test at the draft combine because he's a well-performed player, but there were some suspicions athletically. There was a little bit left to be desired there. However, he had some mixed results. His two-game time trial was very good with six minutes and 24 seconds. So his running capacity is solid and that's evidenced by his ability to win plenty of the football consistently at that. However, where he probably fell short a little bit was was recording a 20 meter sprint of 3.24 seconds, which is a fair way behind some of the other quicker midfielders. So he placed top 10 for that 2km time trial, but it was a fair way behind some of the other top bracket of midfielders when it came to off the mark pace. So let's summarize his strengths or weaknesses. The first strength would probably be consistency. There were nine games in the Coates Talent League where he had 25 possessions or more, and only one game in the championships where he didn't have 25 possessions. Like I said, with his big frame and his physical game style, he's able to be a strong contested player. And like I said, I do think that will make maybe take a little bit of time to become a real strength at AFL level, even though he's fairly physically built for a prospect. He's got a really good penetrating left boot on him as well. Generally speaking, he uses the ball well. He can really drive it inside 50 with those deep kicks, albeit it's fair to suggest sometimes the decision-making can be a little bit off with Langford. We talked about his versatility, his ability to float forward and be a real aerial contested marking threat, and that gives him genuine scoreboard impact too. And like I said, his work rate, which comes off a very solid endurance base, he's able to work from contest to contest fairly well, even if his explosive pace is a little bit lacking. In terms of those weaknesses, again, we did we did discuss speed. That also might make him a little bit of a defensive liability at AFL level if other midfielders are able to burn off him explosively. Sometimes his ability at ground level can be a little bit lacking because he is quite a taller midfielder too. That was something apparently he highlighted as a weakness he wanted to work on in the preseason of this year. So with that all being said, what's his draft range? It's interesting because on talent, I think he's more or less universally considered to be in that top group of midfielders with your Finn O'Sullivan's, your Sam Lawler's, Jagger Smith's, Sid Draper, there isn't a huge gap, but they are kind of diversified in the styles that they are. And Langford is probably unique in a sense. I mean, in terms of taller, big bodied midfielders, he's probably up there with Smiley. They're both six foot three, pushing six foot four. What makes Langford different is that he's a genuine aerial marking threat, which is something he might have over, say, a Josh Smiley. So given that he has a point of difference there, it's, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly which team is going to take the punt on him. So in terms of predicting where he's going to go, you know, if the draft order stays the same, we've got Lawler at one, 
Do North Melbourne they either trade down? Do they take Toru? Carlton would then have a choice of Finn O'Sullivan and Sid Draper, in my opinion. Those would be the way they go. But I think, say, Adelaide. If Adelaide come into this draft and Sid Draper is not available, assuming someone like a Finn O'Sullivan is also not available, I could see them prioritising a play with a point of difference like Harvey Langford over, say, a Jagger Smith, just because he probably adds something different to Adelaide's mix as a taller, strong marking forward midfielder. So in other words, that's probably the earliest I see him coming into calculations, which is going to be probably pick five on the night if we assume Levi Ashcroft is going to get a bid in the first handful of selections. So if his starting range is five at Adelaide, where I have seen some mock drafts suggest that that could be the selection that Adelaide take, what's the bottom end of his range? It's, it's very hard at this point in time to imagine him sliding out of the top 10. So specifically, St Kilda hold what is currently seven and eight. And it really depends, you know, if Kako bids or Lombard bids come inside that top 10. Because if that's the case, St Kilda's second pick becomes 11. And I'd say that's probably the latest that I personally foresee Harvey Langford being taken. Immediately after that, you've got Richmond, who do have um, a connection to Langford. Obviously, he played in their VFL side, and they're, they're reportedly a team that likes Langford. So if he does get to Richmond at, say, pick 12, which is possibly where that's going to be if we've had three players bid on, surely he doesn't get past there. But I do think he would be a suitable selection for St Kilda, also looking for some power and grunt in their midfield with a bit of a point of difference. So to be honest, I'm going to say 5 to 11, with all of Adelaide, Melbourne, Richmond, and St Kilda having selected selections in that range and I think he would suit all of those clubs. So let me know in the comments what you think of Harvey Langford, what's the earliest you think he would go, what's the latest you think he'd go, and would you want your club to pick him if he's available at your first selection? I appreciate you watching guys, let me know in the comments what you want to see next in this series. I've got a list of players that I want to do over the next few days, but of course I'll listen to feedback and maybe bump someone up the order if there's a lot of demand for it. So for now, I'll thank you for watching, thank you for being subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.